Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Since its inception, the U.S. Marine Corps has worked closely with the U.S. Navy to bridge the gap between sea-based and land-based operations. As a division of the U.S. Navy, Marines spend much of their time aboard ships, such as the Marine Fighter Attack Squadrons on an aircraft carrier. But when called upon, they must be ready to engage in air, land, or amphibious assaults. The latter refers to warfare in which Navy ships project ground and air power onto potentially hostile offshore locations. In recent decades, the U.S. military has explored a variety of ways to get Marines and their equipment from ship to shore safely. One of the most recent inventions is the Ultra Heavy Lift Amphibious Connector, or UHAC. This massive tank-like vehicle is capable of driving over the water and directly onto land. Though the project is still in the prototype phase, the vehicle has shown great promise and versatility at every level of testing. The prototype Ultra Heavy Lift Amphibious Connector made its debut at RIMPAC, the rim of the Pacific exercise. Known for being the world's largest international maritime warfare exercise. Here, you can clearly see how the UHAC's unique tank treads are designed to both push water and allow for easy transition onto land. It's worth noting that this prototype design is heavily scaled down from the intended final product, which will be up to 84 feet long and 34 feet high. It's estimated that this will give it the ability to carry up to three M1A1 Abrams tanks, or up to 190 tons of cargo. Even at this size, however, the vehicle has no problem negotiating sand dunes, hills, and other obstacles it might encounter in a real-life combat situation. The word connector in the vehicle title is a very deliberate choice. After all, engineers mainly see the UHAC as a means of moving troops and vehicles from ship to shore and back again. It is, for all intents and purposes, a tank capable of driving over the water and land without interruption. Its oversized treads are not just designed as a means of locomotion, but to protect occupants from enemy small arms fire during transport. They are also shaped in a way as to push the vehicles through the water at speeds approaching 20 miles per hour. This may not seem very fast, but it is up to three times faster than current model amphibious assault vehicles of this type. Even this scaled down prototype can carry and deploy a full-sized Jeep using a simple ramp system.
In the final version, such a ramp will likely be built into the actual hull of the vehicle. If and when the U-Hack is implemented by the U.S. Navy, it will most likely operate from ships equipped with well docks. These are water-level bays, primarily reserved for small boats and amphibious assault vehicles. Here, you can see a U-Hack entering the well dock of the USS Rushmore, a Wid Bay Island-class dock landing ship, Even when forced to negotiate rough seas, the U-Hack is capable of simply driving directly into the bay, where it can be refueled, resupplied, and redeployed as needed. The U-Hack is intended to replace or, at the very least, supplement the Navy's current ship-to-shore solution, the LCAC. Standing for Landing Craft Air Cushion, the LCAC is a large-scale military hovercraft designed to transport weapons, equipment, and personnel from amphibious vessels to the beach. The current model, designed by Textron Marine and Land Systems, is 87 feet long and nearly 50 feet wide. Despite boasting only a five-person crew, this craft can carry up to 60 short tons at a time, while still reaching speeds of up to 45 miles per hour. When empty, this top speed increases to around 80 miles per hour. This means that troops and equipment get where they're going quickly, safely, and with minimum chance of being intercepted by enemy vessels. The key to the LCAC's success is its ability to travel atop a cushion of air rather than actually moving through the water. This greatly reduces drag and allows for higher top speeds. More importantly, it allows for a nearly seamless transition between surfaces. Not only can the LCAC come ashore in mere seconds, but it can also maneuver over swampland, marshes, sandy beaches, and smaller bodies of water in order to reach the front lines. It features a built-in deployable ramp at the front that allows vehicles to simply drive on and off as needed. The ability to operate effectively from a well deck is the primary factor in the LCAC's success. Here, you can see an LCAC inflating its air cushion and preparing to depart from the USS Kearsarge, a WASP-class amphibious assault ship. Like most other hovercrafts, the primary method of locomotion for the LCAC is two enormous fixed propellers at the rear. Rather than using an underwater rudder to steer, these propellers have their own rudders, which direct the air as needed to change the craft's direction. Thanks to its unique design, it can maneuver in almost any direction, regardless of the surface it's traveling upon. Here you can see just how quickly and easily the LCAC deploys from a complete standstill.
in mere seconds, it can enter the water from the beach and be on the way to its next target location. The 60-ton carrying capacity allows the LCAC to hold a variety of vehicles, guns, and other heavy weapons at once. It can also deploy them in mere minutes after making the trip to or from the boat to the shore. This sort of mobility is essential for amphibious warfare, and few vehicles, if any, have been designed that can challenge the LCAC on this front. That said, LCACs do have a reputation for being rather maintenance intensive. Hovercrafts in general have a large number of moving parts, including a total of four high-powered engines. In fact, maintenance is performed every single time the vehicle is set to be deployed. What's more, it's estimated that an LCAC needs five hours of maintenance for every hour of operation. Maintenance personnel undergo extensive training in order to understand how the LCAC works and to keep it in tip-top shape at all times. The United States Marine Corps is unlikely to ever rely on one single type of amphibious landing craft. as different situations will always call for different combat approaches. One of the oldest, but most dependable amphibious assault vehicles still in service is the AAVP-7A1, often referred to as Amtrax. First introduced back in the early 1970s, these vehicles closely resemble a marriage between a tank and a boat and, in fact, that's essentially what they are. Rather than transport troops and vehicles to and from ships, the Amtraks are intended to come ashore and immediately enter combat. Like LCACs, Amtraks are well suited to most environments and can easily traverse sand, water, and marshlands. Or operate on all types of roads. Amtraks are roughly 30 feet long and 10 feet high, but can carry up to 21 combat ready troops. They can also travel up to 45 miles per hour on paved roads, but are limited to just eight miles per hour in the water. As with other amphibious assault vehicles, the Amtrak's success hinges on its ability to operate effectively from a ship's well deck. Training in these maneuvers is known as splash and recovery. As the name implies, Amtrak crews like those based aboard the USS Von Home Richard, seen here, will simply practice driving off the well deck platform and back on again multiple times in a row. For many, this is far more challenging than performing the same operation with an LCAC or UHAC, as Amtraks are slower moving and travel mostly within the water rather than above.
Despite spending 50 years as the U.S. Marine's primary ship-to-shore vehicles, Amtraks are perilously slow vehicles in the water. However, they make up for this by presenting a much smaller target for enemy vessels and troops on the shore. The vehicle is also heavily armored, much like a tank. This gives it additional resilience in all conditions and protects the troops and equipment inside. Thanks to their tank treads, these vehicles can come ashore in even the rockiest conditions and immediately resume operations. Maintaining AAVs is complicated by the fact that many of the vehicles are decades old. Fortunately, the Marines perform regular training exercises designed to familiarize crew members and maintenance teams with the operation and repair of Amtraks. In many cases, these maintenance exercises are done in conjunction with partner countries to maximize interoperability with U.S. allies further. Over the years, Amtraks have been provided to nearly a dozen nations, so it makes sense to share the load when it comes to training. Ever since World War II, beach landing has been considered one of the most important types of military operations in the world. Indeed, getting troops and equipment from boats to the shore has always presented both a challenge and an immense risk to the service members involved. In 2017, troops from five partner nations participated in an exercise known as Talisman Sabre. This ended up being the largest amphibious landing since World War II, involving more than 33,000 soldiers, airmen, and sailors, as well as 36 warships and more than 200 aircraft. The goal was to focus on planning and executing a modern combat beach landing. Exercises like this are a sobering reminder that even the best and most advanced machinery ultimately relies on the skill and training of the men and women who have their boots on the ground. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.